So hi, I'm Emily Herbert here from Counterpoint. We're here at Collision 2024 Toronto, and I'm here with the man of the hour for AI. Nice <laughs> we're, yeah, we're here with Senior VP and General Manager of Technology Planning and uh, Edge Solutions at Qualcomm. All right. So how, how's Qualcomm defining AI PC and on-device uh, Gen AI going into your new devices? So AI PCs, you can buy them in stores starting from uh, they were launched uh, yesterday. Right? Like more than 20 different AI PCs that are available in any store that you want. From Qualcomm's standpoint, we've been on a relentless drive to bring all of the benefits of generative AI running directly on device. We believe that is the key defining attribute of an AI PC from Qualcomm's perspective. There's lots of reasons for that. A uh, lot of the experience that one has from an AI PC happens to be personalized and contextualized for what you want. And in that sense, there's a reason for the AI agents and the algorithms to tap into the data that's located inside the device itself. So you always preserve the benefits of privacy and security associated with it. If you are in an enterprise, then you want to make sure that company confidential information stays there, doesn't actually go back somewhere else, but is used to provide the right context. The second part is that the benefits of on-device AI go beyond just privacy and going into immediacy. So regardless of how your connectivity is, you might have good connectivity, you might not have, you might be on a transatlantic flight and you won't actually get some work done and you want to rely upon your AI algorithms, but if you don't have the right connectivity, then you have to rely upon the generative AI algorithms running directly on device. So that's the other reason. What that means is that your mileage will not vary regardless of connectivity. It's always going to be the same because you can run it on device. Opportunistically, you can use the cloud, but your main idea is to always rely upon Gen AI running on device. And there's so many applications coming up there, and that's where the beauty of these algorithms running directly off your on device come to, come to the picture. Right. So you mentioned a few benefits there. What's the potential of this on device uh, Gen AI applications? So, continuing on PCs first, and probably it's an important one, we are beginning to see two different kinds of applications when it comes to AI, uh, generative AI. The first one is We've been calling it as on-demand AI. Sometimes it's also known as reactive computing. In the sense that you ask a question and you get an answer. It could be you simply talk to your uh, laptop, simply say, can you actually show me the presentation that I made two weeks back to some customer? Something pops up. It's voice UI towards your laptop, but then everything else is done behind the scenes and out pops the right presentation. You can always search for it manually, but this is like a different way of working at it. Yeah. Uh, similarly, you can have document creation, editing, code generation, based upon you actually ask a prompt and immediately some code is generated. It's a starting point and then you work from there onwards. We call this as on-demand, as I said, because you are the one as the end user who asked the question to begin with. There's a different kind of AI that's also emerging in fact. And that's more pervasive in nature. It's pervasive AI, or it's more an intuitive way of, uh, it's not, not just uh, reactive, but it's actually a proactive way of computing. What I mean by that is you have a situation where, let's say that you might be chatting with your colleague and you say, I just had this meeting last week, and you might be actually typing in something. Next thing you know, something pops up right next to it saying, do you want to send your meeting notes to your colleague? And you might ask, no, wait a minute. How did it know that you were asking a question uh, or you were actually chatting with your colleague? Well, there's optical character recognition that's happening mm -hmm. on the screen and there's so many ways of actually figuring it out. Yeah. But the bottom line is, it's anticipating your next move. Mm -hmm. It's kind of reasoning on your behalf and thinking, this is what you might be doing next. It's you and your laptop kind of acting as one. Well. So you have a true co-pilot plus experience, which is what Microsoft has been defining and they've been talking about it that way. But it's a way of always running in the background, AI constantly running in the background. And if you think through it, when AI runs always in the background, it's impossible to do that in the cloud. Yeah. It's just impossible. And more importantly, we all will have 
different kinds of uh, like my AI agent is personalized towards me. You will have something else. Another person will have something else. And because of that, uh, you have to be in a position to run this on the device in a very power efficient manner. And that's where our Qualcomm Snapdragon takes the lead platform. We, will, we custom designed it in such a way that we can handle both the on-demand and pervasive AI workloads. Right. So when integrating these um, these different applications and things like that, how are you expecting that to, like, you, as you said, it runs in the background. How are we expecting that, that impact like hardware specs like battery and things like that when talking about AI PCs? It's a very, very important question. From our standpoint, we had to solve two different technical challenges as we finally commercialized. We cracked the solution and we actually brought it to commercialization. But there were two different technical challenges. One, performance matters. You have to be able to do the best possible job in terms of generative AI. You can't actually take any shortcuts to it. The performance is what matters. That is what one expects from an AI PC. You want to have those Gen AI experiences. That's one. On the other hand, you want to have an extremely tight leash on power consumption. And so we focus on all day battery life. You have to go at least 24 hours, easily. All day battery life with pervasive AI that's constantly running in the background. So we define this as performance per watt. It's effectively high performance computing in an energy efficient manner. Our XLE platform was custom designed specifically with that. Our NPU processor, which is designed from ground up with AI in mind, is with something that we use and it has the best possible industry leading metrics on both AI performance and 45 talks compared to the rest of the competition. And at the same time, a significantly lower power consumption when running these pervasive load or workloads. That's what we think actually makes the biggest difference in terms of what a consumer expects to see from laptops. I know that we talked about laptops, but we did exactly the same thing on all the smartphones that were launched earlier this year with generative AI capabilities running directly on the device. Very cool. So, why is this um, on-device Gen AI so important, and how are you expecting it to impact other products and other markets as we go forward? I think when you kind of think about the way that we have been interacting with devices around us, let's take a smartphone for a change. Yeah. For the longest period of time, it's been an app-centric usage. In the sense, you pick up your phone, you typically go through, most of us have a character of apps on our phones, you kind of go through and then you click on that and then go with that. But it's a, it's one way of interacting with a smartphone. It's what made a phone into a smartphone early back in the day. Yeah. With generative AI, we believe that we are in that transformative moment where we are using a much more intuitive way of interacting with our devices. Voice assistants are actually becoming now increasingly popular. Not because you just do like, you ask a question and you just get one response. But you can have an actual conversation. And it's a much more intuitive way of working with your devices. As an example, I gave this example earlier of, in a PC you say, can you show me what is the presentation that I made? Yeah. It's like you're talking to a person. Yeah. And similarly, last year we showed a, a, a demo at our Snapdragon Summit on a smartphone where a person said, can you make an airline reservation for me? Going from Maui to San Diego on Sunday, preferably in the afternoon. Again, it's like as if you're talking to a travel agent, except it actually uses voice UI, converts your voice to text, goes through a large language model, then figures out, has a plugin to a travel app that you don't see, but it's there, and then fishes out the information and says, he has a reservation for you. Would you like me to go ahead and book it? And then you say, you know what, I changed my mind. Can you add one more person to that reservation? Sure enough. It's just an natural choice. So it's a moment, it's a gradual transformation from an app-centric usage to a more intuitive AI-based uh, UI to our devices. That's what we are really looking for, a yeah. different way of actually working with things. On a productivity uh, uh, use cases, I mentioned code generation. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, like if you're in a software company, you write a bunch of code, you write a lot of code. And actually, the code is like the final step that you have. You start with some problem that you're trying to solve, you have an algorithm in your mind, and you, you're trying to just code along with that. So there is a portion of that code happens to be it has nothing to do with the actual algorithm itself. It's creating the rest of the plumbing around it and making sure there's a lot of mundane tasks associated with that. Mm -hmm. 
using code generation, actually that thing becomes immediate. Like that, your AI algorithm, your AI agent is able to create that code for you and you only focus on the algorithm portion. Immediately the workplace productivity can go up quite significantly. So you focus on what's important and everything else, which is a little bit more business as usual, comes in very naturally. So we expect to see productivity increase, creativity increase, uh, when it comes to, you saw a demo on how you can musicians, artists, content creators have significantly more tools now with AI, which are far more natural in terms of the way that they can create content. So we expect the pace of innovation to start ramping up quite rapidly as we bring in generally all the devices. So with all these examples of like where it could be going, what do you think is going to be like the killer app? What do you think people are going to like maybe adopt the easiest? As this is a n newer technology, people need to build up the habit to use it. What do you think is going to be the, the, the motivator? So um, I'll give you two answers for that. And the first answer is we kind of showed glimpses of what is possible. Qualcomm doesn't, we don't create apps. Mm -hmm. We've always relied upon... There's a really large community of app developers out there who probably can think of so many other uh, innovative apps that you and I can't even yeah. think of. <laughs> and no offense to either of us, it's just that <laughs> that's their job, that's what they do. Yeah. And at the same time, what we have done is made sure that the platform is available for app developers to take the capabilities and build those apps on top of it. So from Qualcomm, we did one thing associated with it, and that is we introduced what we call as the Qualcomm AI hub, we introduced it back in uh, February of this year. In three steps, an app developer can come to the hub. The same hub is available on Hugging Face and on GitHub. You can pick any app from there, now any model, AI model from there. Hugging Face has like 700,000 AI models, believe it or not. Yeah. Or you can pick from a catalog of models that Qualcomm has. Write your application. If you want to test your application on the latest device, we give you access to a cloud native access to a device farm. You can go and test it. So you don't need to have the device in your hat. You can just test it remotely. These are physical devices. Once you get the KPIs, you're good to go and you can publish your app. Mm -hmm. In some sense, we are making access to the platforms far more frictionless and seamless. So app developers can come in with the, all the ingenuity that they have and bring to, bring to bear. And there's so many things that we can do with generative AI with uh, uh, just what even we can think of as Qualcomm. I'll give you one final example on, on what is the art of the possible. Mm -hmm. Earlier this year, we showed a demo at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona in February, yep. where a person picks up a phone, and there's some vegetables on a kitchen table. You, you point your camera to it, and you're talking to your phone, and you say, can you create a recipe for me based on what you see? Right. Now, if you think about it, there's a lot of things going on here. One... The AI algorithms and the AI agent needs to understand that you're looking for a recipe. But at the same time, there's one more job to be done, which is what is on the table to begin with? So you have to figure out what vegetables are there, identify them, and then come up with a creative recipe based upon that. And so you talk you talk to it, so it's a combination of voice, mm -hmm. there is imaging, there's a camera that's running, and then there's text output that comes back saying, here's a recipe for you. By the way, it's a pretty good one. It's not bad at all, actually. <laughs> Very different way. And that's just what we could come up with. So yeah. I can only imagine the millions of developers that are out there, what they can do. So I'm really looking forward to it. Very cool. Well, thank you for your time. Are there any final thoughts you have on AI? Anything you've seen recently you're excited about? If I had only one final thought, I would say, if you're still skeptical of what you can do with an AI PC, go to a store near you and check out all the devices that are out there, AI yeah. PCs powered by Snapdragon and silly. You will like them. I can tell you that. <laughs> Very good. All right. Thank you, Dirk. I really Thanks. appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.